Hi everybody. This video will demonstrate how to create a third person character setup uh, with some pre-created marketplace characters uh, that you can download for free. And we're going to set up from scratch how to create a third person point of view character. Uh, movement, camera actions, jump actions, and then we can do some other attack and other actions later as well. So we're going to start off uh, by using some of, some of the free marketplace content. Uh, we're going to use this character. This is from Paragon. This is the Countess character. And uh, she looks as a couple variations. Uh, but will look something like this in the game. You can find this once you uh, look into the marketplace on the Epic Games marketplace. If you search for Paragon. Uh, this is one of the Paragon characters. You can download any of these characters. But I just chose uh, this let's see, uh, Countess character. Uh, she has some melee attacks, some uh, sword weapons, and what I did was I clicked add to project, and then I found my project, and then clicked add to project. I've already done this, but this takes a little while to do, so I pre-imported um, the content over, so you need to, uh, so don't add, um, add to or purchase the content, which is free. Uh, but you need to add it to cart and then purchase that and then you can add it to your project. Um, you need to first create a project so I've created just a blank project that we're gonna call our fighting game and uh, let's just go ahead and save save current as and we'll call this one fighting uh, fighting game level oh, already got one in here sorry so fighting uh, battle map <coughs> okay and uh, before you add to a project, you need to create a custom project. And then you can do add to your custom project. Okay. After that's done, then it's going to create uh, the folders necessary for this specific character. Uh, all the Paragon assets have a uh, very similar, if not the exact same, uh, setup with the subfolders. So if I go to uh, the Paragon Countess character, characters, heroes, Countess, there's several other options you can dig through and look at all the other variations in here. Uh, this is the character, so this is the animation blueprint. So here's uh, some of the motions that are already created. Uh, these characters come with idle, walk, run, jump, attack, and several other subset animations. Uh, so this is going to be the character that we're going to use. And if you come over here, you can. Oh, look like there's a jog forward. Come down, there's like a stun action. Uh, there's death. This is somewhat like a magical or elemental character. Uh, there's some abilities, some different keyboard uh, subsets. So, but this is the one that comes uh, pre created for you. And the entire blueprint character is ready to go and run uh, from a character standpoint. But we're going to show you how to set up the character, a third person character from scratch. We're just going to use this as our character reference. So in my content folder, outside of the Countess folder, I'm going to create a new folder. And we're going to call this one uh, third person uh, player character. So third person player character. Good. Third person player character. Okay, so one of the first things we're going to create is what's called a blend space, and this is kind of like a 2D graph that will allow us to transition from the idle cycle to a jog to a run, or rather we're just going to do an idle to the jog or to the run. We're not going to have a middle walk or anything like that. Um, so just to uh, get this started, we're going to, in our third person player character folder, we're going to right click and under animation, there are two options, blend space and blend space 1D. We're going to choose the 1D version because we only need a um, one axis graph. So blend space 1D. It's going to ask us to pick a skeleton. So with that Paragon Countess character is the only skeleton I have in my project. So we're going to click on the S Countess skeleton. And then we're going to say uh, third person player BS for blend space. So we're going to open that up. And this is the overall uh, setup of the persona or animation window. If I go all the way to the left with a skeleton here, all of my skeleton bones that I have 
And then if I go over to the mesh, this is the any information that we have as far as the material. Uh, if I go over the asset details, here are all the materials that are associated with this character. So we can zoom in and take a look at her. Uh, then the animation tab is very similar to the one I showed earlier. It shows all of our uh, animation assets. You can drag up and down the asset browser to see that. Uh, we haven't really created the blueprint too so far, but this is to the overall character blueprint. We're going to create our own. And then the main character blueprint already has a physics applied to it as well. We're going to create our own kind of character setup here. So back in our uh, blend space, the third person player BS, we have a graph at the bottom. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to blend or give the option to when uh, not press any buttons to play the idle. And then when I start pressing A or WASD, uh, to allow the character to run in that direction. So this simple blend space is going to allow us to transition from an idle to a run or jog motion. So the first thing I'm going to do is come over here to the asset details panel and where it says access settings, a horizontal access, we're just going to rename this to speed because this is really going to be uh, if the character is moving forward or not. So we're going to change the speed I'm going to change that maximum access to 375. Now that is really how fast the character can run. So you can change that up higher or lower. All right, so now in the graph, uh, we're basically, this is a green dot, and on the left side is going to be the walk cycle, or the idle, put, idle cycle, and on the right side is going to be the idle cycle. So we can give this variable an option to uh, move from the left to right to transition between the idle and then the walk. So we're gonna go find our idle. So I can just type in idle here, idle. And there's a lot of different ones. Um, let's just use the idle relaxed. So I'm gonna drag that in. I'm gonna drag it all the way over here to the zero on the graph. Okay, and what should happen as default is the character should immediately move into the idle animation. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do find next is let's do jog. This character has a jog. And we're gonna jog forward I'm going to drag that all the way to the right side. So then now, it's going to transition from idle to jog. So if I drag left or right in my timeline here, or the graph here, it's going to slowly transition to a jog motion. So the idea is so that when I'm pressing buttons, idle will happen, and then I'm going to drag to the right to add to uh, the jog. Now I can also add a walk in here. This character doesn't have a slower walk, uh, but that's going to be the setup for this blend space. Let's do save. The next thing we're going to go create is the animation blueprint. So in my character folder, I'm going to right click again and go to animation, and we're going to find animation blueprint. And we're not going to choose a parent class, but we are going to choose the uh, S count of skeleton down here and click OK. And we're going to title this one third person player and MVP. The animation blueprint houses all the major animations of what the character can do. And then we will eventually create a character blueprint that then controls how the character actually moves uh, and then the key press bindings to recall the specific animations. So the animation blueprint houses how the character animates in and out of these different cycles. So open that up. Okay, so right off the bat, uh, this animation blueprint will open up an animation graph and an event graph. The event graph is very similar to other blueprints. But the animation graph is specific to animation. So this is what or how we can then create a state machine that will be able to transition between our different states. So our major states that we want to create is idle, to walk and run, and then to jump. So that's our overall state machine that we want to create. And then the output then gets connected to the character blueprint. All right, so this is where we're going to house all of our information here. Uh, I think it's actually a good point to stop. We'll stop our uh, recording and we're going to come back in the next video and talk about uh, the state machine and setting up our animation blueprint.